Hello, this is Maz Belkir from iTurk Real Estate and today's episode is going to be about what you need to know about real estate investment in Turkey. So our show, our weekly show called iTurk Podcast, we give information for people who want to come to Turkey, live in Turkey, work or invest in Turkey. Our first show was about residence permit. The second one last week was about uh, company establishment. And today's episode is going to be about real estate investment. If you have any questions, I would like to remind you that you can ask them in the comments below and we will answer them at the end of this live video. Also, I would like uh, for you to share this video so more people can uh, get this information which we'll be covering today. Our episode is going to be about real estate in Turkey. Um, why is Turkey a good place for uh, investing? And how can I choose the best area or the best place for investing? What is the buying process in Turkey? Uh, we're going to cover it in a straightforward manner. What are the expenses of uh, keeping buying and keeping a house in Turkey or a property? What kind of properties are there? Um, what about inheritance? Can a foreigner inherit uh, property in Turkey? And many more questions. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the comments below and we will answer them at the end of the video. So we'll start with the first one. Why should I invest in Turkey? Well, Turkey is part of the G20, the largest economies in the world, and they have a plan of being in the te top 10 uh, countries in terms of uh, GDP, uh, the economy. And even with the coronavirus pandemic uh, last year, Turkey is still... Uh, the market, uh, the housing market in Turkey uh, increased. Uh, there was an expansion. We look at some statistics to give you an overlook. Uh, from 2013 to 2020, about 10.5 million houses have been sold in Turkey, um, including foreigners and uh, citizens of the country. With 1.5 million houses sold in last year, 2020 alone. Now, if we look at the numbers, uh, this is considered an increase of 11% uh, compared to the year before. So even with the coronavirus, we can see that the market is really uh, vital uh, to the economy and there's a lot of buying and selling. Um, we look at numbers for foreigners, about 40,812, about 40,812 homes were sold in 2020 alone for foreigners. And when we look at the top 20 nationals who are buying property in Turkey, we can find countries like uh, Russia, Iran, um, Germany, uh, Pakistan, and uh, Sweden, Afghanistan, Azerbaijan, Kuwait, Yemen, the UK, the US, among many others. Now, the top three in last year were Iran, number one, number two, Iraq, and number three, Russia. So, 40,000 houses were sold just this year, even with the pandemic. It means that people are still choosing Turkey as a good place for property investment. Now, what benefits can I get from buying property in Turkey? Well, if you buy a property or a group of properties for an amount exceeding 250,000 US dollars, you can be granted uh, Turkish citizenship and the process takes about two to three months uh, to get it all done. Also, the, the, the return on investment 
for the properties is always high. Now, how to find the best properties in Turkey? Well, this depends on your preferences. Do you want to live in the property? Do you want to rent it? Do you want it for other investment purposes? Well, you have to look at the price compared with other properties in the same area or with the same uh, qualities. Now, there's, there's a good way uh, for a lot of investors to do is to find a place which has a lot of potential in the future. Now, let's say I, I take a look at a project which is being built or was just recently uh, uh, built and there's a lot of projects in that area which are being uh, constructed. Let's say there will be a new metro station, there will be a new shopping center and I take a look at these factors so I understand how much value this property is going to have after a couple of years. Now, after I take a look uh, about these things, should I use a real estate agency to help me with the buying process? Of course, you should use a real estate agent because you're getting consultation for free and you're getting experts who can scan all the properties for you and find the best uh, options for you to make a choice. Now, when I say, of course, you need to buy, you need to buy with the help or assistance of a real estate agency, it doesn't mean that you can do it with any agent. You need to take a look at uh, the companies which are working in real estate and compare them you can also, we live in 2021, so you can easily go on the internet and cross-check or cross-examine uh, these companies and see if they have a, a, a reputable brand, if people are talking about it, is there, uh, are there any good reviews or negative reviews about the company. You can ask uh, other people who said that they uh, worked with this company, you can look at their address, their information, you can call them, you can visit them, and then you can visit other companies and try to see uh, which one works better for you. Now, the reason why you should use a real estate agency is because, first of all, you might not uh, know the language here, Turkish. Also, it can be uh, very complicated for you to try to explore all the options you can uh, see in Turkey because there's uh, a tremendous amount of projects. Even the locals use real estate agents to help with the buying and selling process. Now, let's say I chose a real estate agency and now I'm working with them and I tell them my preferences, my budget and what I'm hoping uh, to buy. Now, if you're abroad, you can also get a viewing trip or a viewing tour booked with the real estate agency. So the viewing trip basically is I get uh, options of properties. I look at them, I filter them, and then I choose the ones which are um, appropriate for me. And based on that uh, number of properties that I'm really interested in buying, I can book a viewing trip. Now, the viewing trip, with it differs from agency to agency, but it can also include your flight tickets, uh, the hotel accommodation, taking you from the airport and taking you back. Um, you will go around uh, the places to see the properties and check them for yourself. And then if you decide on choosing one, you can uh, make a sales contract, you can uh, give the power of attorney to a lawyer so they can uh, finish up the buying process for you. And then you don't even need to stay in the country. You can just go back and wait for the process to finish. Now, if you're living in Turkey, you can basically do this uh, much easier. Now, 
we will talk about the real estate buying process. So let's say I, I chose a property which I really want to buy. I'm interested in buying and I have made my decision. Now, the first thing I need to do is to check if this property has any debt or any kind of uh, problems uh, which might affect uh, the purchasing uh the purchasing uh, process now if you're buying properties for uh citizenship means that you need to buy for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more then there's a couple of things that you need to uh check first the properties which you which you're buying can be bought from foreigners if you're buying a property from another foreigner you cannot use it for applying for citizenship uh, in this uh, program. Uh, second, you need to check that there's uh, no debt uh, or any problems with the apartment. You need to check uh, the title deed, uh, which is called TAPU, and we will cover this uh, a bit later. Uh, usually, if there's a problem, if there's uh, some mortgage payments, uh, anything uh, you can find. Uh, in the tapu or you can check with the municipality and uh, the real estate uh, uh, registry now after I checked with these things it's better of course to use uh, an agent or a lawyer uh, to help you with this process and it will be smooth for you now I chose the property, I checked everything. The first thing I'm going to do is to pay a deposit to take out the property from the market to not be listed anymore so I can start negotiating uh, and making the buying uh, process. Now, how much should I pay as a deposit? Well, this depends on <clears throat> Sorry, this depends on the value of the property. But to give you a glimpse, it can range from 2 to 5 up to 10% of the value. After I pay the deposit, I start uh, negotiating about the terms of the buying process. And also, I would recommend that you make a sales contract. A sales contract between the buyer and the seller it will have the information of the property you're buying and the payment process and the terms and conditions. Now, you don't need a sales contract to, uh, to buy a property in Turkey, but it is a way for you to minimize risks. And if you're, uh, if you're not paying the full amount, uh, if you're not paying the full amount and you're paying uh, installments, then you need a sales contract. Um, the sales contract should have the information of the property and it needs to be uh, reviewed by a lawyer so you can make sure that uh, your rights are protected and everything is going according to plan. Now, after you make the sales contract, it is also recommended that you notarize it uh, so it stands uh, it will have a good legal standing in case something happens during the buying process. Now, um, we made the sales contract or we decided not to make it. Uh, the first thing we need to do is to, to start like the Note, this is very important. The sales contract does not mean that the property changed hands. If I sign a sales contract between me and the seller and I, uh, I pay the amount, it doesn't mean that I own the property. I don't own it yet. I have to get a title deed. So how to get a title deed? You apply to uh, the Directorate General of Land Registry and Cadastry. So this director general, or some people call it the Tapu office, Tapu, which uh, is in Turkish, uh, it means uh, it means the, the the title deed or the the land registry. You can apply even without a sales contract, and you get an appointment 
uh, for the buyer and the seller to meet and sign the transfer. Now, neither the buyer nor the seller needs to be there if they gave power of attorney to a lawyer to represent them and continue the process on their behalf. Now, we came to the topic of uh, title deeds. It's very important to discuss also the types or categories of title deeds in Turkey. So we will summarize it for you in this way. There are generally two kinds of title deeds. There's the blue one, which is called Mavi Tapu. The blue one is for uh, lands which are agricultural and are not uh, appropriate for residential purposes. If you're buying land for like a farm or for agricultural purposes, and it's not assigned by the government that they can use it for residence, then you will get a blue title deed, which is called Mavi Tapu. On the other hand, you have the Pembe or the pink or the red title deed. The red title deed is for places which are residential and it can include land uh, which is suitable to be built as a residence. Let's say uh, an apartment building, a house, a villa, an office. All of these are included in the red title deed. Now the red title deed also has three categories within. These three categories are either uh, full title deed or uh, construction title deed or timeshare title deed. The first one, the full title deed, which is called Kat Mulkieti, it's when the place is ready to be uh, used as a residence and you have full ownership of the place. Let's say it's an apartment, let's say it's a house, it's a villa, it's an office and you bought it and you can move in, there's no problem. The second type, which is called Kat Ertifaki, it's usually when the building is still in the construction process or it didn't get uh, a permit or a certificate from the municipality that you can move in and use it as a residence. Now we move into the third part, which is called uh, Deura Mulk or Timeshare. So timeshare is more like um, vacation ownership. So let's say I buy an apartment or a building and I get to use or reside in this property for about 15 or 20 days per year. I can choose to rent it during this time or I can use it to reside myself. Uh, this kind of uh, Ownership is not renting, it is owning, and it's uh, uh, written in the title deed that you have a specific number of days uh, designated in, at what time that you can use this thing. So the Deura Mulk or the timeshare is very popular in a touristic cities in Turkey. Let's say there's a large luxurious residential, uh, uh, sorry, large luxurious resort and there's and there are apartments uh, there for Deura Mulk or time sharing. I might not need to pay the full price because I don't want to live there uh, indefinitely, but I would like to go there, let's say, for two weeks every year for vacation. I can then apply to get, uh, because it can also be that they're offering for you to buy it at a very discounted price. So I get a title deed stating that I can stay there for this amount of time per year. I can also rent it when I don't want to uh, use it. Do I have full, complete ownership of that property? Yes, you have complete ownership of that period of time in case you want to sell it or you want to uh, change the ownership, you can do it, you're free uh, uh, to, to do what you like uh, with this amount of time. So 
We discussed the three different uh, types of the red tapu, and we're going to talk about now the required documents for getting a title deed. So I applied, I chose the apartment I want to buy or the property I'm interested in buying. I applied to the land registry, the TAPU office, and I got an appointment. Now I have to prepare some documents. These documents include uh, my passport and a photocopy of it, and I need to translate it and get it notarized. I also need a tax identification number. I can get the tax identification number without a residence permit. Uh, it's a simple process, can take about two minutes. Also, I need a copy of the current title deed from the seller. And I need the receipts of the fees to be paid. So, what fees are there to be paid? We're going to cover the fees at the end of this video, but there is uh, a percentage that you need to pay to the land registry. And when you're about to sign, uh, you will come with the seller, the buyer and the seller. If, there, if uh, you have the power of attorney, then someone else will be acting on your behalf. They're going to, uh, the clerk will, uh, will read you the terms and they will tell you that this uh, property you're buying is located in this area and the street. They're going to give you the address, the size of it, everything. So you make sure that you are buying the right property which you saw. Uh, this is very delicate. Here they focus on this uh, matter to make sure that uh, no scams happen with foreigners. Um, another thing which you need to uh, uh, which you need to uh, consider is that you need to pay the amount if you're buying it before you get the title deed. Now. Now, there, there's a question, okay, how much, do, uh, how much do I need to buy for <clears throat> citizenship purposes? And should it be one property or a bunch of properties? So for citizenship, I need to have uh, properties owned or bought for $250,000. It can be one property or it can be... Uh, a number of properties. So let's say I buy an apartment for uh, $100,000 and then I buy another apartment for $150,000. Now the total amount will be $250,000. I can apply for citizenship. Also, I need to state the fact that the reason why I'm buying this property is for investment, uh, citizenship by investment purposes. Another thing, you need to uh, make sure that you're buying not from a foreigner because if you're buying from another foreigner and you want to apply for citizenship, it won't be accepted. You can buy from a foreigner just for buying uh, purposes. All right. Um, there's another important question. Uh, can a foreigner buy property in Turkey? Are there any limitations for foreigners to buy property in Turkey. Almost any national can buy property in Turkey. There is actually some limitations on some specific countries. Uh, to give you an overview, uh, recently Turkey decided that they're not, uh, uh, they're going to make it more open. So they, uh, they took out the law which had this mutual treatment that the, the countries which do not allow uh, Turks to buy property in. They're now allowed to buy property in Turkey, but there are still some countries about I'm losing my voice. About four or six countries that are not allowed to buy, except if they can get uh, permission from the government. We're not going to say which countries exactly are, but if you want to make sure you go to the land registry and uh, they will tell you for sure if you're allowed to buy property in Turkey or not. Now, if you're not allowed, there's a way to do this. If 
you establish a company and buy the property with that company. Also, you can apply for permission. Note that in, for some nationals, there are some conditions on buying. So, uh, for countries which are close to Turkey, they're not allowed to buy property in the regions which are close to their country. Let's say uh, the countries like Greece, Russia, they cannot buy in the areas which are close uh, to their countries. There's also some other limitations. A foreigner cannot buy more than 30 hectares in Turkey in total. Now, if you apply for an exception, they can increase that limit to 60 hectares, but generally it's only 30 hectares. You cannot buy property in military or security zones, and you cannot buy property more than 10% of a certain uh, neighborhood or area or uh, village. So if you follow these uh, conditions, then you have, you're free to buy which property you like. Now we move to the next question about inheritance, which is very important and gets asked a lot by foreigners. And there's a lot of misconceptions about this topic. A lot of people believe that when you buy property in Turkey, you cannot inherit it uh, later on. People can't inherit property. This is not true at all. Uh, Turkey protects this right uh, for foreigners. You're treated the same way as citizens. You can inherit property, but uh, the person who is inheriting should also follow the conditions. If the person does not follow the conditions of the nationality or the total number of uh, hectares or the other conditions, then at that point, the government can sell the property and reimburse you with the value. So the, the inheritance rights are protected. There's also a question of who gets to inherit. Well, this depends on the country of the national. You need to get a paper from the court, from your home country, stating that uh, this inheritance is decided in this uh, way with these terms and conditions, and then you can bring it here and follow up with the process. All right, we come to our last uh, topic, and then we're going to take your questions. So our last topic, what are the expenses of buying property in Turkey? So if you're an investor and you're planning to buy a property in Turkey, you need to also check how much expenses you're going to pay for the buying process and how much you're going to be paying every year to keep that property. Now, if you're using a real estate agency, then you need to check with the agency if the properties you're interested in buying uh, have a certain commission or that the commission is included in the price. And this really varies. Some uh, project houses, uh, some projects they have uh, a list price which includes uh, the commission of the real estate agency so you don't need to pay any extra fees and in some cases uh, there's a fee which starts from two up to four percent cannot be higher than four percent so this is the real estate agency fee um, currently there's a lot of projects which have the commission included to make it more attract uh, to make it more attractive for the investor now do i need a lawyer yes you need a lawyer if you want to make sure that things go smooth since you don't know everything about the laws here in turkey and the lawyer fee um the lawyer fee i don't know it can range from a thousand to two thousand to three thousand dollars depending on the lawyer and depending on what kind of investment you're going to be making. Um, there's another thing which you need to do, which is now compulsory. It's called appraisal report. So basically, the appraisal report is done by experts to check the 
to check the value of the property and make sure that it is not overvalued or undervalued. This is done by specific companies which are uh, accredited by uh, the Free Markets Board in Turkey. Uh, it's called Expertise uh, Rapport in Turkish and you can get it for as uh, little as $150. Now, the reason why they're doing this is to make sure that, uh, that the price you're paying is uh, close to the market price. Another thing you need to be paying, uh, which is important, is the conveyance tax. The conveyance tax is paid to the land registry office and it is 4% of the declared value of the property. Note that usually this 4% is divided equally between the buyer and the seller. So the seller pays 2% of the value of the property and the buyer pays 2%. Unless there is a specific agreement or it's uh, written in the sales contract that sometimes the seller pays the whole amount or the buyer pays the whole amount. There's also uh, some fees you will be paying at the at the uh, land registry office, it might be from, I don't know, like $30, $50. It's, it's not much, depends on uh, what kind of uh, uh, procedures the property needs. All right, we come to the last thing, which is uh, property tax. So property tax is something you pay every year for the property, and it's equally paid by foreigners and the citizens. How much property tax should I be paying? Well, if, if we're talking about residential properties, then if this property is in a small city, you will be paying 0.1%. Um, if it's in a big city, you will be paying 0.2%. So it's like one in a thousand or two in a thousand. So if I'm, if I'm buying a property in Istanbul, I will be paying 0.2%. If this property is in some village, I'll be paying 0.1%. Now, what if this uh, property is for commercial purposes? Let's say uh, an office, uh, a restaurant, then I'll be paying 0.2% uh, for the small cities and 0.4% for the large cities. There are also some other fees which I'll cover uh, uh, briefly, um, there's something called IDET or maintenance fee. Uh, usually this is paid in uh, large apartment complexes where you have security or you have swimming pools and other facilities. This really depends on which project you're, uh, you're uh, choosing. It can, it can be as little as $10 up to uh, $100 to $100 really depends on how luxurious and how many facilities are in the building. This is paid monthly. You can ask about it when you're choosing the property. About the electricity uh, fees, the, the water fees, it's, it's uh, comparably uh, cheap here in Turkey. The electricity fee is around, can start from uh, 10 to $20 per month. If you're using electricity, if you're using water, it can't be more than $10 if uh, it's only uh, one person using the, the building. Uh, internet is also cheap, around $10 to $15 per month. Uh, so basically, these are the fees which you uh, might expect to be paying. Of course, there are some conditions depending on what kind of property you're buying, if it's for agricultural purposes or if it's a building still under construction. And I would uh, repeat again that it's better to have uh, a real estate agent helping you with the process, an expert, a lawyer, to make sure that you uh, make the right decision and not regret it later on. Um, we came to the end of this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we will see you next week with another episode. Also, make sure to follow our YouTube channel. Uh, we'll be posting a lot of content and short videos uh, about everything you need to know about Turkey.
uh, in real estate, uh, residents, uh, companies, uh, the life in Turkey, uh, the culture in Turkey. Uh, so until then, I would see you next time. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you.